Hello everyone and welcome to Medford Anywhere Learning TV. We're glad you're tuned in. We want to give a shout out to our friends at Southern Oregon PBS, KTVL, KDRV, and the Dove Network. Thank you for hosting us on your station. In the Medford School District, we have one shared vision and that we believe that all are learning and learning is for all. What better place to do that than right here on Medford Anywhere Learning TV. All right, boys and girls, I'm so proud of you. You have done a great job through this creative thinking process. We are on our last part. This is my favorite. This is called enrichment, enrichment of thought. It's extending the idea of something that was in the story of the three little pigs. It's going beyond in a really imaginative way. So I'm going to take the idea of the house. So you created a house, and now we're going to take that house, and we're going to think about our dream house. So I want to show you this story. I'm not going to read it, but it's called If I Built a House. So I want you to be thinking, if you were to build your dream house, what would it look like? I want to show you the end result of this story, of this character in the story created. Look at this design. So this design from this story, if I built a house, look at it. My house by Jack, and he's got the kitchen here, and then he's got porthole windows. What a very creative idea. And then his bedroom is up this really tall thing, and it has this slide and an art room. Hmm, what would you put in your home? Taking that idea of a house from the three little pigs and extending it, going beyond. Look at this, a flying room. I would add that in my house. And then there's a huge racetrack. And look at all of this, a fish tank room and a good place for a picnic table and a plexiglass playroom. That is one incredible dream house. That was one creative house. Lots of good ideas, Ms. Boyles. Can you think of an art project, something that you could draw for your dream house? Absolutely. My wheels were turning as soon as I was reading the Three Little Pigs story, how I would do it better. And also that next book you just read had me really thinking. So I already started to draw my dream house. Mm. Do you want to see what it looks like? I do, show. So I just started first with a shape and I decided um, I love round things. So I wanted to make a round house because I've also never seen that before. And I would have lots of different people living at my house and we would need a big living room in the middle. And so when I had this idea in my head, I thought this is like a donut house because it looks like a donut. So we would have our rooms off to the side here. So everyone's bedroom, and then they would each get their own bathroom. And we would have like a media room and we would have this really cool um, exercise room and a movie room and a kitchen that we can all share. So each of these little rooms is something different. Um, that we get to share together or that maybe is just our own personal space. So I know that my next step of my house would be to label each room and um, I might eventually do a view looking straight on because this is a top-down view and I could add some more detail with labels. But that's my start of my dream home. Wow, Miss Boyles, that is an amazing thought. I love it. So boys and girls at home, how can you draw with your family? Make it a group project. Design your dream house. Mm -hmm. Boys and girls, we're going to do one more enrichment piece. Going beyond taking an idea from the story of the three little pigs and extending it. So... Luckily, there's so many writers that have done this for us. So I want to show you examples of what they've done in creativity. They have taken the idea of the three little pigs and they have written what I, they call a fractured fairy tale. Fractured fairy tales is where they take the original idea and change the setting, change the characters, change the problem, change the solution, and they make it the same idea, but in a different way. So here are some examples. The three ninja pigs. What a creative idea. So this author took the three little pigs and made them ninja pigs. 
This one is the Three Little Javelinas, and it's also written in Spanish. Pretty cool idea. So I can tell that the setting is in a desert. That would be kind of interesting. So then this one is the Three Little Wolves and the Big Bad pig. My students like this one. I've read this one to them. And they took the idea and fractured the character. So now the three little pigs are the wolves and the pig is bad. Interesting, huh, Miss Boyles? That is. I love that one. Have you read this one? I have. Yes. It's really interesting. And then this one is Mind Your Manners by B.B. Wolf. Hmm. hmm. I'm going to let you try to find this one on your own. Maybe Google it to see what this one, how it has been fractured. Have you read this one, Ms. Boyles? I haven't, but I mm. like this idea of fractured. It means you're taking a core concept and just making it your own. Do I yeah. have that right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So you're thinking in a different way. Yeah. You're taking all the forms of thinking and then extending it. And then this one is the last one I have to show you, the three little Cajun pigs. Ms. Boyles, how do you think they might have fractured this by looking at the title? I'm wondering if they are uh, changing the setting mm. and maybe the time period. It seems like it looks really yeah. different in its artistry. Yeah. Yeah. Very interesting. So those are some ideas of fractured fairy tales. Taking the idea and changing it into a writing, hmm, into a story, into a narrative. Can you at home... Think of how you could fracture the three little pigs in your own way. Miss Boyles, I bet you have a great way. I am thinking of so many ideas. Yeah. And, Share with us. You know, I think about um, teaching my students about adjectives and nouns. And so I like that there's the three little pigs. And I have, um, I want to stay with three so that people have some familiarity with it. But I get to change the noun and the adjective to be something different. Mm -hmm. And that's how I'm going to fracture it to start. So mm -hmm. I think I would do something like the three giant frogs. Ooh. And I can't wait to create a problem with that. So I'll get to mm -hmm. that in a minute. But I have these three frogs and um, they are unusually sized. So that's mm -hmm. going to be kind of a silly problem they have. But I think that one of their problems is going to be that their food is too little. So they have to figure out how to get um, a lot of food into them. And then their solution might come later when um, they figure out how to shrink down mm. in order to eat all those bugs that they were trying to eat in the first place. Wow. Yeah. That, is an inc that is an incredible framework for a very creative story. Thanks. Way to extend that and keep the same idea, but change the setting and the characters. I can't wait to see what you write, Ms. Boyles. Should be fun. And boys and girls at home. Take the idea and see what you can do with your writing. Well, boys and girls, as we wrap up today, Miss Boyles and I have enjoyed taking you through the process of creative thinking. Now you are going to get the chance to be an expert on this. So if we go back to that map that Miss Boyles was writing on that tree map, fluency was the first part of our creative thinking. And so she came up with a list. She generated and brainstormed a whole list of fairy tales. And I'm sure at home, you came up with a lot of different fairy tales too. And maybe you have different fairy tales in your, on your bookshelves at home. Our challenge to you is to choose one of those and take that through the process of creative thinking. Go through fluency and flexibility and originality and elaboration and evaluation and enrichment. And take that fairy tale that you choose and see what you come up with. I bet if you take a picture of what you design or what you come up with, your classroom teacher would love to see your creativity. This is a fractured fairy tale from the fairy tale, The Three Little Pigs and the Big Bad Wolf. The author, Eugene Trivizas and the illustrator Helen Oxenbury have taken a story and switched the characters around. So let's read. The Three Little Wolves and the Big Bad Pig by Eugene Trivizas, illustrated by Helen Oxenbury. Once upon a time, there were three cuddly little wolves with soft fur and fluffy tails 
who lived with their mother. The first was black, the second was gray, and the third was white. We're going to stop right there, friends. Right here, the author has already told us some outside character traits. We know that the wolves are little, cuddly, they have soft fur and fluffy tails, and we know what color they are, black and gray and white. One day, the mother called the three little wolves around her and said, My children, it is time for you to go out into the world. Go and build a house for yourselves, but beware of the big, bad pig. Again, the author has told us two character traits already in the text for the pig, big and bad. Don't worry, mother. We will watch out for him, said the three little wolves, and they set off. Soon they met a kangaroo who was pushing a wheelbarrow full of red and yellow bricks. Please, will you give us some of your bricks? asked the three little wolves. Certainly, said the kangaroo, and she gave them lots of red and yellow bricks. So the three little wolves built themselves a house of bricks. Funny friends, I'm thinking about the story of the three little pigs, and at the end of that story they built the house of bricks. But the author in this story is switching to the beginning. The bricks are being built. The brick house is being built at the beginning. I wonder what will come next. Let's keep reading. The very next day, the big bad pig came prowling down the road and saw the house of bricks that the little wolves had built. The three little wolves were playing croquet in the garden. When they saw the big bad pig coming, they ran inside the house and locked the door. Friends, if you don't know what this word croquet means, the illustrator is giving you a clue. You can see this game played with mallets and balls and hoops. That's the game of croquet. The pig knocked on the door and grunted, Little wolves, little wolves, let me come in. No, 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 said the three little wolves. By the hair on our chinny chin chins, we will not let you in. Not for all the tea leaves in our china teapot. I'm going to stop there, friends. I want to show you a china teapot. So when I first read this story, I was a little bit confused. I'd never heard that version before. Not for all the tea leaves in our china teapot. So this is what a china teapot looks like. It's made, called china because of what it's made out of, similar to what your plates or bowls might be made, of, made out of at your house. And the tea leaves, when you make a pot of tea, you fill it with hot water, and you use tea leaves because leaves are made out of special, tea is made out of special kinds of leaves. And you put the leaves into a special container in your teapot and they soak in the water to make a big pot of tea. So when the wolf said, not for all the tea leaves in our china teapot, that must mean something that's very important to them because they weren't willing to give that up. Let's get back to the story. So the wolf said, we will not let you in, not for all the tea leaves, in our china teapot. Then I'll huff, and I'll puff, and I'll blow your house down. So he huffed, and he puffed, and he puffed, and he huffed, but the house didn't fall down. But the pig wasn't called big and bad for nothing. He went and fetched his sledgehammer, and he knocked the house down. The three little wolves only just managed to escape before the bricks crumbled, and they were very frightened indeed. Do you see? They grabbed their china teapot right there. It's a little hard to see, but it's there in the wolf's hand. Keep an eye out for that teapot throughout this story. We just have to build a stronger house, they said. Just then, they saw a beaver who was mixing concrete in a concrete mixer. Please, will you give us some of your concrete? asked the three little wolves. Certainly, said the beaver, and he gave them buckets and buckets full of messy, slurry concrete. So the three little wolves built themselves a house of concrete. This word slurry is an interesting word. You might not know what it means, but if you've ever seen wet concrete, concrete is what they use to make sidewalks out of. If you've ever seen it when they're pouring it, it's still, it's kind of like a rocky slurpy. It's not solid. But it's not like water, liquid like water. It's kind of chunky. So slurry is a, sort of like a wet, um, rocky mixture. 
No sooner had they finished than the big bad pig came prowling down the road and saw the house of concrete that the little wolves had built. They were playing battledore and shuttlecock in the garden, and when they saw the big bad pig coming, they ran inside their house and shut the door. If you don't know what battledore and shuttlecock are, you can use the picture, the illustration, to see what that game is that they're talking about. It's similar to badminton. The pig rang the bell and said, Little frightened wolves, let me come in. No, 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 said the three little wolves, by the hair on our chinny chin chins. We will not let you in, not for all the tea leaves in our china teapot. Then I'll huff, and I'll puff, and I'll blow your house down, said the pig. So he huffed, and he puffed, and he puffed, and he huffed, but the house didn't fall down. But the pig wasn't called big and bad for nothing. He went and fetched his pneumatic drill and smashed the house down. Friends, you can use the illustration to help you figure out what a pneumatic drill is. The three little wolves managed to escape, but their chinny-chin-chins were trembling and trembling and trembling. Mackenzie, what's another word for trembling? Shaking. Shaking, that's right. They were shaking in fear. They were so scared. And if you look back in the picture, do you see the teapot? There it is, right there. We shall build an even stronger house, they said, because they were very determined. That's a character trait right there. Determined means they wouldn't give up. Just then, they saw a truck coming along the road, carrying barbed wire, iron bars, armor plates, and heavy metal padlocks. Padlocks are the locks up here. And plates, friends, they aren't the plates that we eat off of. They're like big rectangular or square pieces of metal. Please, will you give us some of your barbed wire, a few iron bars and armor plates, and some heavy metal padlocks? They said to the rhinoceros who was driving the truck. Sure, said the rhinoceros, and he gave them plenty of barbed wire, iron bars, armor plates, and heavy metal padlocks. He also gave them plexiglass. That's kind of like a clear plastic that they could see through. And some reinforced steel chains, because he was a generous and kind-hearted rhinoceros. There's two character traits right there, generous and kind-hearted. So the three little wolves built themselves an extremely strong house. It was the strongest, securest house one could possibly imagine. They felt absolutely safe. The next day, the big bad pig came prowling along the road as usual. The three little wolves were playing hopscotch in the garden. When they saw the big bad pig coming, they ran inside their house, bolted the door, and locked all the 37 padlocks. The pig dialed the video entrance phone and said, Little frightened wolves with the trembling chins, let me come in. No, 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 said the little wolves, by the hair on our chinny chin chins. We will not let you in, not for all the tea leaves in our china teapot. Then I'll huff, and I'll puff, and I'll blow your house down, said the pig. So he huffed, and he puffed, and he puffed, and he huffed, but the house didn't fall down. But the pig wasn't called big and bad for nothing. He brought some dynamite, laid it against the house, lit the fuse, and the house blew up. The three little wolves just managed to escape with their fluffy tails scorched. Scorched is another word for burned. And do you see what they have in their hands? They've got their treasured teapot. Something must be wrong with our building materials, they said. We have to try something different. But what? At that moment, they saw a flamingo coming along, pushing a wheelbarrow full of flowers. Please. Will you give us some flowers? asked the little wolves. With pleasure, said the flamingo, and he gave them lots of flowers. So the three little wolves built themselves a house of flowers. I'm going to describe the house of flowers, and I brought some pictures to help you picture it in your mind. So I want you to visualize what this house looked like, and I'm going to show you pictures of the flowers. It says, one wall was of marigolds. So picture in your mind a picture of marigolds covering a whole wall. One of daffodils. 
one wall of pink roses and one of cherry blossoms. The ceiling was made of sunflowers and the floor was a carpet of daisies. They had water lilies in their bathtub and buttercups in their refrigerator. It was a rather fragile house and it swayed in the wind, but it was very beautiful. Remember, the word fragile means that it's easy to break. Hmm, doesn't seem like a very safe place. Next day, the big bad pig came prowling down the road and saw the house of flowers that the three little wolves had built. He rang the bluebell at the door and said, Little frightened wolves with the trembling chins and the scorched tails, let me come in. No, 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 said the three little wolves. By the hair on our chinny chin chins, we will not let you in, not for all the tea leaves in our china teapot. Then I'll huff, and I'll puff, and I'll blow your house down, said the pig. But as he took a deep breath, ready to huff and puff, he smelled the soft scent of the flowers. It was fantastic. And because the scent was so lovely, the pig took another breath, and then another. Instead of huffing and puffing, he began to sniff. He sniffed deeper and deeper until he was quite filled with the fragrant scent. His heart grew tender, and he realized how horrible he had been. Right then, he decided to become a big, good pig. He started to sing and to dance the tarantella. Now, if you don't know what that word tarantella means, the author is giving you a clue in the sentence. He said, he said to, he started to sing and to dance the tarantella. So dance is your clue right there that the tarantella is a type of dance. And here you can see him in the picture dancing with the tambourine. The wolves are looking a little surprised. At first, the three little wolves were a bit worried. It might be a trick. But soon they realized that the pig had truly changed. So they came running out of the house. They started playing games with him. First, they played pig pog, and then piggy in the middle. And when they were all tired, they invited him into the house. You can see the house up here on the hill. Is it how you pictured it in your mind? They offered him tea and strawberries and wolfberries and asked him to stay with them as long as he wanted. The pig accepted and they all lived happily together ever after. Let's read. The cat, the dog, Little Red, the exploding eggs, the wolf, and grandma by Diane and Christiane Fox. What's this page for? It's called the end paper, but it comes at the beginning. Here's our title page. The cat, the dog, Little Red, the exploding eggs, the wolf, and Grandma. Little Red Riding Hood. There once was a sweet little girl who lived with her father and mother in a pretty little cottage at the edge of the village. She always wore a red cape with a hood, which suited her so well that everybody called her Little Red Riding Hood. Hey, what's this? It's a story about a little girl who always wears a red cape with a hood. Cool! I love stories about superheroes. What's her special power? She doesn't have any special powers. It's not that kind of story. So, what happens? Well, one morning, her mother asked Little Red Riding Hood to take a basket of eggs, butter, cake, and sweets to her grandmother. Oh, so kindness is her special power. Does she hypnotize bad guys into being nice? And what kind of candy? Look, do you want to hear this story or not? So, where was I? Little Red Riding Hood was on her way to Grandma's house when she met a wolf. A wolf? Excellent! They're always the bad guys in stories like this. I bet she zaps him with her kindness ray. Tzzz. She does not have a kindness ray. She has a basket of eggs and butter and cakes and sweets. How does she fight crime then? Does she have a cool kind of flying gadget basket? Are they exploding eggs? There's no kindness ray, no flying basket, and no exploding eggs. 
She's just a sweet little girl with terrible fashion sense on her way to see her grandmother. Okay, okay. So let's hear the rest of the story. Well, the wolf asked Little Red Riding Hood where she was going, and she said Grandma's house. So the wolf said goodbye and secretly headed to Grandma's house. Hang on. Why doesn't the wolf man try to eat Hood Girl then and there? You're doing this on purpose, aren't you? How should I know why he didn't eat her? Hmm. I wonder why the wolf prefers old ladies. Anyway, the wolf arrived at Grandma's cottage and saw the old lady lying in bed. She jumped up when she saw the wolf and locked herself in the closet. I think the wolf needs to think bigger if he's going to be a supervillain. Maybe he could rob a bank on the way to Grandma's house. Are you listening at all? Yes. Special powers? No. Supervillain? No. Exploding eggs? No. Okay, so Grandma leaped out, up out of bed and locked herself in the closet to be safe. Then, the wolf put on some of Grandma's clothes and climbed into the bed, waiting for Little Red Riding Hood to arrive. Hang on. So now you're saying he does want to eat her? Yes. Anyway, this is my favorite part. She arrived and said, What big eyes you have, Grandma. And the wolf replied, All the better to see you with. She's not very bright, is she? I mean, if there were a wolf dress dressed up as my grandma, I might have noticed right away. And Little Red Riding Hood said, What a big nose you have, Grandma. And the wolf replied, All the better to smell you with, my dear. Let me see that book. And she said, What big teeth you have, Grandma. And the wolf said, All the better to eat you up. Yikes! But just at the last moment, Little Red Riding Hood's father arrived and chopped off the wolf's head with an axe. Ooh. And they all lived happily ever after. I'm not sure that the wolf was very happy in the end. So let's see if I have this right. The Red Hood is on her way to help an old lady when she meets the wolf man. He has an evil plan. He likes to dress up in girls' clothes and eat people. He and Red have a big battle, and Red's father puts an end to Wolfie. Well, sort of. It's not a very nice story, is it? Are you absolutely sure this is a children's book? That's it. I'm leaving. Find your own book to read. Just one last question. What? Is Grandma still in the closet? Bonk. Ouch! So, do these end papers always come at the beginning? Yes, unless they're at the end. And that's the end of our story. But if you look on the back cover, there's a closet shaking and somebody saying, hello, hello, like the grandma's still stuck inside the closet. Thanks for tuning in to Medford Anywhere Learning TV. Medford School District is a place where all are learning, and learning is for all. I'm at the school picking up my stuff. Uh, I want to wish all the teachers a happy Teacher's Day at 2020 quarantine. Miss Hawkins, you are the best teacher ever. Heart you, Rainbow, because you're a rainbow. Hi, Mrs. LaBelle. Hi, Mrs. Southmaid. I love when you read stories to us, and I like when you give us hugs. Happy Appreciation Week. I miss you. Bye. I'm Mr. Grutel and all the other teachers at Griffin Creek, and thank you for all you do. Hi, Mrs. Bennett. I miss you, and I wish I could be in class with you today. Teacher, I like you because you're so cool, and you teach us a lot of stuff. Teacher, I love you because you help us stand on a ball. Thank you, Misty. I'm Mrs. Marcos and all the other teachers at Griffin Creek. I miss you guys all. And thank you for all you guys do. Bye. Thank you for doing Zoom meetings with us.